Councillor Carlson, quick sound check. Hello. Awesome, thank you. Countless grade six students who think I know how to use it. Only three more classes that I have in February. Three more. I'll go over at Patterson. Three. Great. Yeah, we'll have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, by everything I have, it is 1.30. Are we live now? Not yet? Okay, so we'll wait till we go live before we get started. For the thousands of people watching us. Thousands. <laughs> you don't know that everybody is interested. Let's call ourselves to order and we will start Mr. Westerson with a roll call for governance. Pleasure. Councillor Carlson. Present but on mute, sorry. Councillor Dodick. Present. Councillor Middleton Hope. Present. And Councillor Croson. Present, thank you. Thank you. We'll start next with the acknowledgement statement. If I can find my right page. The City of Lethbridge acknowledges that we are gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people of the Canadian Plains and pays respect to the Blackfoot people past, present and future, while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship to the land. Lethbridge is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Our first motion for today is the adoption of the agenda. I have a motion from Councillor Middleton Hope that the agenda of the regular meeting of the Governance Standing Policy Committee on Thursday, January 26, 2023 be adopted as presented. Councillor Middleton Hope. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm unaware of any changes, alterations, deletions, or modifications. Mr. Clerk? Nothing was added, so it is as it is. It is as it is, and I call the question, Madam Chair. Question's been called. All in favor? All right. Passes unanimously. My next resolution is from Councillor Dodick. Be it resolved that the minutes of Governance Standing Policy Committee held on Wednesday, November 24, 2023, be approved, and the Chair and Clerk designate be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the status of initiatives for January 26, 2023 be received as information. That's the consent agenda. Councillor Dodick? Uh, unless there are no questions, I would call the question. Unless there are questions, I would call the oh, question. Hands up, so I will take that as the question's been called. All in favor? Consent agenda is adopted unanimously. We move now to the first presentation, to the presentation by Chair Kozlovi of the Lethbridge Police Commission. And she was elected last night, so congratulations on being officially the chair of LPC. So welcome, Chair Kozlovi, and we will turn it over to you to discuss Police Commission Bylaw 5969. Thank you very much. Um, I will just t start off by saying I had a tooth extracted today, this morning, so I'm a little frozen, so if I start drooling, just tell me, okay? <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the time. Um, as you know, the history of this bylaw has been, uh, a review of it has long been coming. Um, and now that we now just changed over uh, a new commission chair with new commission members, uh, I will be asking the council, this group here, if we could have a little bit more time. I am bringing forward some recommendations, but I think it's prudent that we have the new co the commission new commission also be part of the recommendations. But just going forward, um, we did review the bylaw 5969. There are a few things that we are recommending right off the top. Um, and again, I'm going to preface it by saying very recently the Alberta Police Act was changed. So some of the changes that are going to be a result of that may impact this bylaw, especially when it comes to appointing members to commission, because now that will be a government responsibility on some of them. Um, Section four, I don't want to take a whole bunch of your time, but on section four, um, we are saying that a resigning member's place on the commission may instead of shall be filled. 
Um, as you all know, the last um, couple of years, we've had a, a number of vacancies on the commission from time to time, and it's made it a, a little bit problematic to have that in the bylaw. Uh, section nine, the member may only be removed by resolution by city council, which we um, certainly agree with. What we're asking for is the removal of the words for cause. This is something that the, com the commission no, the council, <laughs> we've got too many C words. Uh, the council needs to have the ability to remove members. Section 22 and 23, we do also have a vice chair and that was missing, that's um, a very easy fix. Um, we don't call them subcommittees in section 27 and 28, they are committees. We have three standing committees. Um, there was just a typo in section 28, it says that all the members shall be uh, members of the committee. They should say members of the commission. Um, section 30, we speak about the police, uh, chief of police um, contract being subject for ratification by the council. We've added the words reappointment, and this is one of the areas that um, we have had some discussion on. Uh, we would like further discussion on that. Um, since we made this um, document up, we have checked with our colleagues in Calgary and Edmonton, and in their bylaw, it is absent the reappointment. So we want to have a little bit more time and a little bit more discussion on that. Um, section 37, we um, want, we are recommending that as commissioners, we should not be participating in the collective bargaining process. Yes, we can uh, approve it after, but we have professionals that do the uh, negotiations, and we should not be part of that. Um, section 43, um, in the act, it does say that the chief of police is um, a member of the police service at our pleasure, but it also says that the other members, that that and all members, but it can be delegated. So we have delegated that authority to the chief to appoint other members of the police service. Um, that's, that's all the recommendations. I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Kozlovi. Now, just because this is a standing policy committee, I do have to ask if any of the members of the public wish to speak. As you can see, the room is full, so I'm going to assume there is no member of the public who wishes to speak, but just to make sure that the public is always aware they can speak. And I do have quite a few names in the queue, so I'm assuming there are questions. And we'll begin with Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Congratulations, Ms. Kozlovi, um, on your successful election last night. <laughs> Um, just a, a quick question. Uh, in front of us today is uh, a resolution contemplating uh, directing administration uh, or count asking council, I guess, to direct administration to prepare these changes. But did I hear correctly that you want some more time to review with the new members of commission before that goes forward? Yes, you heard correctly. This was done last year. We had a different commission. Um, and we now have three new members, a new uh, vice chair, a new chair. I believe it's prudent on us to have this commission take a look, deep dive. I'm not saying it's going to be changes, but I believe it's prudent that this commission have the opportunity to see the recommendations that we're bringing forth to you folks. And I'd assume okay, also, you. as you said, with the new Police Act, Council may also want to have another look at things. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Carlson, more questions? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to follow up, so basically we're just receiving this for information and we'll get uh, something, uh, a request back at future meeting? The, the um, resolution that's coming forward is under your name, so you may make yourself a friendly amendment to adopt this as information <laughs> at this time if you'd like when the resolution comes forward. But that would be, I think, the recommendation from the Police Commission is to take this as information to help guide the process but not the final. Excellent, then thank you. Then that's probably a good heads up to um, uh, the, the clerk. <laughs> that, that will probably be my my resolution coming forward. Thank you. Councillor Dodick, you're next in the queue. A couple of quick questions. Uh, on number nine, you say a member of the commission may be removed. Uh, you might want to consider saying a, me a member or members. 
because you never know the situations might arise that it might be <laughs> more. It, it just seems like it's singular. Uh, 10C is not uh, subject to any proposed changes, but um, it says it prohibits someone serving on a police commission if they're convicted of any crime under the Criminal Court of Canada. There are other criminal uh, acts, uh, for example, pull drug prosecutions are done under different legislation. So you might want to have a check uh, probably with the, the police officers as to what other uh, federal legislation might involve criminal activity that you, you want to capture in that in particular. Thank you. Okay. Those are my questions. I want to note that Mayor Higgin has joined us. We're in the middle of questions right now, Mayor Higgins. So if you have any questions on the recommendations, um, the motion will likely be accepting for information. So if you have an older motion, you might want to be aware of that. Next questioner is Councillor Middleton Hope. Good, and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Klauslovi, for bringing uh, forward the um, uh, amendments to the bylaw as uh, recommended by the Policies and Procedures Committee. Um, there was a lot of discussion that went into it, and uh, it's perhaps not complete yet. Uh, we're moving down that road, and I, I, I certainly encourage it. Um, so as, as a part of this, and as the new chair, of course, um, of the Lethbridge Police Commission, would you agree that the commission is obliged to report to council uh, as to the workings of the police commission upon request by council? Um, we will be presenting an annual report later on this spring. We've already got that in the... Q, where we haven't quite <laughs> got it polished up yet, but we will, uh, we've already started those discussions, so we should hopefully be able to get it in late spring in front of the council. Okay, so yes, great, okay, thank you. That's the only questions I have. Um, just the motion, I had a motion suggestion from the de uh, de city clerk's designate. Councillor Carlson, you might be aware that he is suggesting that we don't do it for information, that, but that we refer it back to Lethbridge Police Commission, because for information we simply die. Um, and since they want more time, the recommendation is that. Thank you very much, um, Chair Kozlovi, for coming forward. I know I started this conversation several years ago about some needs, and I know um, where the Police Commission is coming on some of these, from the Council point of view, the cause one is interesting because I know at looking at other police commission ones, they actually outline what cause is. So the police commission at this point, and again, it might change, is suggesting removing all need for cause, or is it better to outline cause? Because right now it's kind of blank on it. It says you have to have cause, doesn't say what cause is. So there's two ways to go. You can either remove that you don't have to have any cause, which is just arbitrary then, or would the police commission consider looking at deeper into what the cause may be? I think we're open to looking to at a deeper dive as to what cause could be. So it's a little bit clearer uh, for both parties. So as a commissioner, I would know what would constitute my removal, but also for council members, and that you ha don't have any question what you can use to remove a, a member. That might be something for the police commission to consider is what cause might actually be. Um, the other question I have is on how long do you think? If we refer it back to the police commission, um, are you looking at three months, six months, just to give some sense of when you might think this might come back? Um, I'm really hoping that we can discuss it at our February meeting and then bring it back early in March, depending on what, I don't know when you meet. We meet monthly, so that's never a problem. We're always here. Maybe you should, uh, maybe we should just get on the agenda and that forces us to have the discussion. That's the reason I asked it, because then Mr. Westerson kind of makes, he always has what they call the radar list of things that might be coming up. Uh, the other question I have is, one of the things that's in the Police Act that councils can do, but is not in this agenda, is council can review police commission policies to ensure those are there and in existence. Not, of course, police service, that's the role of the commission. But would that be something that the um, commission might consider looking at? It might give council a bit of a, a better sense of what the commission actually has for policies. Is that something that police commission has been looking at at all? Is whether or not council should have access to commission policies, at least to know the list of what exists, if not a deep dive into the policies? Um, you know, I'm just, I could not speak to that. I haven't spoken to the whole commission, but policies really are not sacred. They're not confidential. So, you know, if the council wanted to have a list of the, the policies that we have, 
I would see no reason why we wouldn't uh, just bring the list. And to prove that they exist and that everybody feels comfortable that they are there, they're in place, et cetera. All right, those are my questions. Councillor Middleton Hope, you're back in the queue. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Just in, in regards to uh, returning uh, the updated version of the bylaw, um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't clearly hear when that will come back to, is, did you direct it to come back to council or, or committee? Uh, back to governance, because it would come back to governance, and then we would recommend it on if that was the choice. But we're looking at March, just as a So Q2? We're that, yeah. Q2 for us, then. Um, of course, three new commission members, things might change, but that's the, that's be the plan. Okay, um, thank you. Councillor Carlson, you're next in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you again, Ms. Koslovi. One thing I, I wouldn't mind um, you folks discussing at commission is in regards to the collective bargaining um, that you, you've changed. So the request is now uh, that uh, the commission doesn't approve uh, the, the collective bargain with their members, but only council does that. Is, is that common? I, I, I assumed it was the commission that held the authority over the employees, et cetera, and council just ratified. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. No, I don't think you're, yeah. That was one area that I, I looked at that what we were asking for is not to be party to the actual negotiations. It's hard to be party, to be sitting at the table, even as an mm -hmm. observer, and then to have to approve or, or not approve after. Um, you can't be both. You can't be sitting there and then at another time uh, say, yes, let's approve this and send it on for final ratification to the City Council. That's one of the areas that I think we do need to discuss much deeper with the Commission. Thank you. I'd appreciate it because the way I read it is is you're still there as observers, but you no longer approve. Mm -hmm. um, and so just some discussion uh, that I hope will happen at the Commission. Thank you. Hello, and I believe you have a comment or question. Thank you. Uh, Director Vanden Heuvel asked me to uh, request the committee to consider directing that this work be ruled into the KPMG Police Commission bylaw work that his team is working on um, so that ideally a collective package of all recommended changes desired by any relevant parties uh, would be considered at the same time by this committee. So that was the, the first point I wanted to make. And then I would also offer uh, to, the, to the chair of the commission and to this committee to uh, provide any assistance from our office in, in any of their suggestions. And I, uh, you know, as an example, when the discussion around cause, it, while your point about perhaps adding in some additional examples, I don't believe it could be removed because the Police Act actually specifies that it can only be revoked for cause. So those are the kinds of discussions and details we could work through and I'd be happy to assist the Commission in any way that, that they saw fit as part of this process as well. Perfect, thank you. I think the Commission will certainly take that under advisement. Um, the suggestion that it gets rolled into KPMG could be done after the March meeting after the Commission has had another look at it, right? It would not affect the resolution today, but that might be the resolution that we suggest for the March meeting. Wrong button. Uh, I, th I don't know the timeline that Mr. Vanden Heuvel has, but uh, ideally, hopefully, if, if, if all of the recommendations ultimately are considered at the same time, I think that's the most effective. And I guess, and the big question mark that the uh, Madam Chair has also noted is, is the Police Act as well in, in processing those changes. So I, I'm not asking for any change to the proposed motion at this time, but I, I did promise Director Vanden Heuvel I'd relay those concerns to this committee and make them aware of that as well. Well, it makes sense to have it all connected. So they, uh, if we do that in the March meeting, giving commission two more months to look at it, and then the recommendation, Mr. Westerson will kind of keep in his back of his mind, is to tie it all together with all the work that's been happening on the bylaw, just so that council will get one package. All right, Councillor Dodick. Yes, I thought it was finished questions, but one more uh, cropped up. Uh, it's re regarding 39.1. It says, in the event the commission is required to report to council, uh, the the phrase in the event I, I just need a little clarification is in the event mean that if City Council requests uh, a report or information from the Commission the Commission then, then is required to report to Council so I'm just trying to see what in the event means what event 
That might be a good question for Mr. Lowen because we don't know what the commission council of that time was thinking within the event. Because under the police act, they must bring an annual plan and they must bring an annual report. But in the event means can anytime. We, yeah, it's a weird phrase. I believe that provision was added at the time that the SPCs were created. And I, I don't know that any particular thought was given to the wording of it, but given the plain language of it, in my mind, in the event that uh, legislation, solicitor general, any outside force required the commissioner report to, to council the police act, or if council made the determination that there was a requirement that they speak, that th that language would be broad enough to encompass both of those circumstances. Okay, so I want, uh, it's the last part that I want, uh, so you had suggested if council requests some information from the police commission uh, that can be done and the report would be to the community safety standing policy committee. Is that your understanding? Yes, that's the understanding and, and the way that system was designed and I, I would defer to the clerk's department uh, for, for any more of the policy rationale but that all information flowing to council or as much as possible would be processed in a less formal committee first before going to council to allow for if necessary public uh, involvement or other transparency. Th thank you and my belated congratulations <laughs> to his appointment as chair. Thank you very much. All right, my queue is empty, so we will be moving to Councillor Carlson soon for the resolution. But before we do that, I just want to thank you and the Lethbridge Police Commission for the continuing work on this. I know it's been about three years since I first brought up that this is not a good bylaw. It has a lot of issues and concerns with it. And so I'm glad that the commission has continued the work and is going to continue the work. But I'll now turn the... Um, floor over to Councillor Carlson who is bringing this officially forward and the recommended motion is to refer this back to the Lethbridge Police Commission and to thank Chair Kozlovi and the Police Commission for the work done previously. And to report back by the, for the proposed amendments and return by the end of Q1 2023. Essentially. I'm paraphrasing because I just now got the paper. Do you want me to read the official one? <laughs> Be it resolved that the Governance Standing Policy Committee refer this matter back to the Lethbridge Police Commission to engage the new members of the Lethbridge Police Commission in the proposed amendments and return by the end of Q1 2023. Councillor Carlson, that is your motion. It sounds like I wrote it myself. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, appreciate the update and information and uh, look forward to seeing it back here in March. Uh, if there's nothing further, I will call for the vote. Okay, question's been called. All in favor? passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Chair Kozlovi, and I know we'll be seeing you at a few other things as well, because, yeah, the annual rep uh, plan will be due relatively soon. Moving on to the section, second presentation is Councillor Middleton-Hope on electoral reform of the pre and the precinct model. So, Councillor Middleton-Hope, the floor is yours. The floor is yours because this is your presentation. Sorry, Madam Chair. I was uh, uh, otherwise occupied with the city solicitor. Um, well, you have before you, sorry, you have before you a, um, is a motion, can we put the motion up? So this, this was referred by council back to the SPC. However, in referring it back to the SPC, there was no language in it that would cause anything to be done. No, no, by yourself as the mover, that was that's the expectation, but I think you want to refer to admin now, probably. I do want to refer to, to admin, and if we are in, in the, uh, if we have the ability as an SPC to, to refer it to admin, then I would like it to, to, to refer it to admin. Uh, I think the, um, uh, the motion that's before us, Mr. City Clerk. Uh, there is no actual motion that I have, so you would be designing the motion. Okay, the motion is up there now? Yeah. It Perhaps we could review it and determine whether it's adequate and whether it provides the direction necessary to move this forward to administration to conduct the necessary inquiries or inquiries. I think it will be the city clerk's department that would be doing the work. Uh, does the motion capture the information you would require, Ms. Hilford, to do work on this model? Thank you, Chair Croson, for allowing me to speak on this. Um, I believe that when this came to council, it was directed to administration. 
and I did speak at it at that time. And then administration was removed, and I believe the intent was to come to this committee and narrow the scope and provide clear expectations. Because as it stands right now, um, I'm not sure how big a, a piece of work this could be, what resources I would require, any budget or anything like that right now. A robust examination, I, I, I guess I'm looking for um, clear expectations what that means. And it talks about a precinct model and any other models. Thank you. So we'll, we'll go to questions because that might help us to understand what we're thinking of for scope and clear expectations. So Councillor Carlson, you're first in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. And unfortunately, I don't have the full resolution uh, in front of me. Um, so I'm, I'm a, a bit out of depth here. Um, my, um, my thoughts when I came in front of Council referring it to committee was to um, examine possibilities. Um, what came in front of us at Council was uh, a, a, a first draft or a first possibility. And I was of the opinion that there could be other options uh, as well. Maybe a different pre precinct model could be one. Um, what my, do, you, do you mean by that different oh, geographical precincts? Is that what you're thinking? Like, it, or well, well, that that yes, because what was presented was one model, um, okay. and there could be others. We could have eight precincts. We could have three. Um, however, my personal bent is to get away from pure ge uh, geography um, because for me the issues that many of our um, residents visitors um, uh, owners face are, are not geographical um, they're like we get a call about parking um, well parking is not something that if i live on the north side but i want to complain about a parking situation where i work on the west side um, this doesn't really give much attention to that. So I was thinking there may be other ways rather than um, geographically splitting up council um, into wards as such, um, but based on portfolio or scope of work or um, um, policies. Uh, anyways, that was my thought is that we'd have a discussion on how how it could possibly be looked at and then direct our administration to go and explore those options uh, rather than just one option that came in front of us that I, I appreciate the work done on. So those are just my thoughts. Um, so, so you're I'm suggesting themes, like more of a, a, a cabinet position portfolio based on topics of concern well, in the public? Well, that would be that would be my um, my interest in exploring that yes rather than just geographically and so i'm wondering how we we go about that that was my thought as it was referred to this committee and we would kick it around and say are there other ways to do this how can we do this how how would that work and then direct administration to go explore those options okay councillor middleton hope my, yeah my question would be is that a possibility okay we'll get all the questions on the floor and then we'll try to narrow some stuff down Councillor Middleton Hope, you're next. Yes, only one comment to Councillor Carlson. There are no parking problems on the west side. Have you been to the university? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, I certainly uh, uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Councillor Carlson's approach, which is slightly different than the one that is before us. Uh, and it lends itself to uh, a more robust examination of potential options to as long as we are keeping very clearly in mind uh, an enhancement of accountability by council to citizens across the city and whether that's uh, individual areas that are identified and or tasks that are identified i would hope that that model comes back or options come back from administration to provide us with options moving forward which is a change from what we currently have. Okay. Councillor Dodick, you're next in the queue. Uh, <clears throat> when uh, Red Deer went through the exercise of putting in the uh, 
plebiscite uh, regarding the ward system and uh, the vote was against it. They did some sort of assessment, or at least there was some anecdotal evidence uh, that, and I can't remember the number, but basically that 95% of the issues that uh, came before council, whether uh, as an ini initiative by administration or by complaints or concerns of citizens was something that had universal application to the entire city. So I guess my question is, is, is there any way for the administration to relatively easily track uh, either through the 311 uh, concern process or other methods that citizens have uh, raising concerns to identify whether we're talking about uh, what percentage of complaints or concerns are with respect to a specific area of the city or whether, as uh, was mentioned, like, you know, the example of parking can be, you know, sort of more problematic, uh, say, on the uh, downtown, the things, and crime might be more stratified in, in, in certain areas. So I guess the at-large system is, as, as it says, but if 95% of the concerns are based on the city as a whole, then, is that information somehow that we can, can gather? Because that could give us uh, at least an idea whether a geographical uh, representation is really something that is a route that we want to go down. So can those reports be done by 311? So Ms. Hilford, I believe you want to respond? Um, I don't want to speak for Mr. Hillier and 311, but I'm certain that there's a reporting component where he could get some of those statistics, if not all of those statistics, but I'd be happy to talk to him about that and bring that at a future meeting if you'd like. Uh, because I would really like to, uh, curious, I know there's going to be a lot of them potholes, and of course potholes are going to be west side, north side, south side, so if you have representation on the north side, you know, th that doesn't mean that the north side guy or gal will necessarily be the one to deal with north side potholes. So that's the kind of information that at least would be of interest to me before I would embark further on consideration of this sort of model. I know we do get 311 reports, so you're looking for is it geographical or not. Do you also want in that report, because that would be easy enough to do, the largest concerns? What are the biggest concerns that come forward? Basically, just sort of a, a synopsis of, you know, we will get numbers and what, what are they in relation to, and then you'll get a sense of is this something that's sort of global or is, can you clearly identify that there's geographic components to certain types of complaints? Correlation between the largest concerns that come forward and whether they're geographic. That sort of overlap. Okay. All right, Councillor Middleton Hope. Yeah, I, th I think we're, we're probably getting down. Uh, into the weeds a bit in terms of trying to identify a specific model. What we're looking for today, I think, is to provide administration with direction to do the examination. Uh, whether it's, whether it's uh, in respect to a precinct model, whether it's in respect to a model that is geared towards specific types of complaints, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is greater accountability uh, and greater interaction, from my perspective, uh, between council members and areas of the, of, of the city. So whatever way that works, uh, I would encourage uh, administration to look at options that may be available to it, uh, to us rather, and to come back with a model that says, here's an opportunity to, um, to be more accountable to the citizens that elected us. And I think one of, the one of the models that may achieve that is the model that's been presented. There are maybe other models that present that as well. Um, I'm not in, uh, I think the, the model that uh, Councillor uh, uh, Carlson is presenting in terms of a more um, kind of a, a more heterogeneous type of model uh, might have merit. So uh, I think if we uh, direct administration to have a look at what is available in terms of um, looking at models that may make council more accountable to citizens. I think that if that's the ultimate goal that we're looking for, uh, then there may be more than one ways of achieving it. Ms. Hilford, you've heard some of the questions. Does that give you the information you need? So basically it would be both a practical and a theoretical review of what sort of divisions could be used um, 
within council, with, within a precinct model. So is it geographical? Is it thematic? Is it, I don't know what the other one possibly could be, but that's sort of the idea is to give us a, a list of possible ways of dividing up the community so we're more accountable to the public. I'm wondering whether uh, if engagement was to be included, and if so, how much, or what stakeholders, or are we just to research models? Are there models out there that you're thinking of that we could look at, or just research all across Canada? Well, I'm sorry, is that question, was that directed at me? I think broadly as well. I know she was looking, oh. uh, but I think if anybody, I, I haven't seen any, like I've seen ward systems, I've seen hybrid ward systems. I've seen portfolios that Councillor Carlson has talked about where you've kind of become the subject, subject matter expert. Um, but I don't know if I've talked to any colleagues who have other ones. But Councillor Carlson, I know you're popping up. Do you have any, uh, any thank examples? You. I think I, I'd be keen if there, to find out if there were any other examples. The ones we've sort of talked about are the only ones that are um, um, in my realm of experience. Um, one of the the, <clears throat> the thematic ways of, of breaking things up is um, uh, has as we've done with our various um, SPCs. Uh, so there's uh, an SPC around governance. There's an SPC around civic works, social community, etc. Um, the chairs or chair and vice chair of each of those um, could be the portfolio lead or cabinet <laughs> lead type on on those types of issues. So say if you are talking about, um, I'm, I'm going to guess, I'll, I'll say parking, uh, it would go to the chair and co-chair of the civic works, it might, is my guess. Um, so those were the kind of possibilities I was thinking. And then to further um, make it very much like the precinct style that um, Councillor Midland Hope and Councillor Parker brought forward is ensuring that those chairs rotate uh, so that um, there is representation. Say I'm the chair and they don't like me. Well, six months in, <laughs> you can talk to Rako. Uh, that kind of idea. Can you Anyways. Chair Rako? <laughs> <laughs> Just right. some, just some thoughts. Okay, Councillor Dodick. I think at the beginning of this, uh, the city clerk had mentioned that she had some concerns as to, you know, uh, as, as essentially what a robust examination means in terms of manpower and, and, and time. So, uh, so it's very difficult to sort of uh, define exactly you know, what we're looking at there, and I'm not sure if Councillor Middleton Hope can define it. Well, I, th I think, yeah, robust is, is not my language, but it, it, I, I, would, I would assume that we would do a comprehensive academic literature review of uh, the material that is available out there on various models of municipal governance. So I would suggest that I would come back with a framework that would look at scoping this out, if I need resourcing, if I need budget, uh, how the timeline, that's what I suggest. And maybe bring the information back that committee asked for, uh, Councillor Dodick to ask for some 311 statistics and any other information, bring that back as well. And then maybe we can further refine the expectations and, and what we're looking for. That work for the first step? So having heard our conversation, City clerk will go away and say, just to do the research you've asked, 311 is simple because it's in-house, stuff that we could just cross-reference, but to do the research on possible precinct models, she would bring back, this is how much it would cost, this is how much our resources, do you give us the go-ahead to do it? In which case, the resolution would have to, so we'd end it basically at the re robust examination of the uh, precinct model. But not just that precinct model, it yeah. is possible precinct models, right? It's not, or possible models, not even precinct necessarily. So it's a robust examination of possible models, both theoretical and in use sort of thing, and a strategy and timeline for how much 
the research would require, et cetera, the budget, et cetera. So not going in depth into any, but just giving us a list of possible, possible precinct models. How much time would that take? Because I, yeah. All right, Councillor Carlson, you're back in the queue. Only because I forgot to lower my hand. I have that problem at home too. Was it your cat? <laughs> no, my dog is upstairs. Thank you. Always blame the kids or the animals. It's just the safest way to go. All right. So I see Councillor or Mr. Westerson is busy typing, trying to capture what we have said because we've been clear as mud. Does that give you sufficient, Ms. Hilford, to know your direction if you see what's on screen? We will refine it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we can just talk amongst ourselves for the, so they can figure out how to write that. Or we can take a quick recess if anybody wants to take a file break only 40 minutes into the meeting. Councillor Carlson thought this would be a five minute meeting. I told him he was wrong. I try. <laughs> had I known, I would have, I would have driven over. I had to come. I had to go deliver twenty-eight six books to a place this afternoon. I like dropping off books.
So we have now a draft motion, be it resolved that the Governing Standing Policy Committee recommends that City Council direct administration to report back to Council through the Governance Standing Policy Committee by the end of Q2 2023 with a report outlining the framework, timeline, resourcing requirements, including budgetary requirements for former review of potential precinct models for Lethbridge. Councillor Middleton Hope, this is your motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we have massaged this sufficiently. I see Councillor Carlson is thinking contemplatively on the screen. Unless there are any other uh, questions or amendments to the proposed motion. The only concern I have, do we all have the same understanding of this? That we're looking for a scoping of how much work it will take to do this, not the actual work to do this? As long as we're all in the same agreement, because I hate for somebody to vote on something they're not sure of. Yeah. All right, there's no question, so if you want to call the question, we can vote on it. I will call the question. Questions been called. All in favor? Excellent. Once again, we pass all our work to Ms. Hilford. I'm so, you know, I like that. No, I'm just all right. Happy to do it. There are no submissions, and so we are adjourned now till the next meeting in February. Every month, Councillor Dodick, every